This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Hello and welcome into another edition of Three Ma. I am John Kurz, joined by Cole Manbeck today. We do not have Derek Young. We do have Matt Wells, who is the new K State co offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach, and associate head coach. And uh, we are thrilled to get a chance to chat with him. And of course, as we start every pod, uh, we've got to remind you about our friends at Holiday Distillery. Great K-State folks who bring you 360 vodka and Ben Holiday bottled in Bond bourbon. So get out and support them. Find it wherever you can. Stock up for your tailgates. Stock up for your watch parties. Uh, we got plenty of hoops left to watch this season. Uh, so lots of reason to get out there and grab that. We appreciate their support as always. We also appreciate Matt Wells uh, taking the time to join us here. I know uh, it's it's a very busy time as if there's a time that's not busy on the, the calendar of a college football head coach throughout the year. But uh, coach, we really appreciate it. How the uh, the first couple of months on the job in in Manhattan been for you? So awesome! Thanks for having me on. But so so uh, uh, such a great experience. I mean the the people here in Manhattan have been awesome, and and um, you you feel the love. And when you do get out of the building, which is usually just to the basketball game uh, or out to eat, um, but just the time with the staff and the players. That's it's about the people. It's it's. Um, it's Chris Kleinman, it's the staff, it's the culture, um, the quarterbacks, just being able to dive into our offense and and learn um, as well as evolve uh, where, we're, where we're taking this thing and then getting with the quarterbacks. So that, for the last two months after recruiting um, in January, have been uh, taking up most of my time. Well, I know there's a lot that makes sense logically when you walk it through, right? You spent time at Oklahoma, obviously Texas Tech. We know that you're you're friends with Chris Kleiman. But in your words, like what was it that really attracted you to this opportunity and made this something that you wanted to do? Yeah, that it, that's easy because once I decided I, you know, I wanted an opportunity to hopefully uh, get back on the grass, so to speak, and and be an assistant again. That, and I've said this, I think I said it in the press conference, but it's the same answer. It was, I wanted to work for a head coach that I knew and respected in a program that had a great culture and was winning and, uh, was looking forward to an opportunity to hopefully coach quarterbacks. And when, when coach called, um, all three boxes were checked and, and, you know, in our profession and in, in my world, um, that I, I knew how, um, a low percentage chance was that I wanted all those things that I was going to get it. And that's why it's a God thing, and I mean that very uh, sincerely, um, that I believe that this opportunity um, came from him, and I do believe that uh, timing is everything in this profession. And so with me and my family and where we're at on our journey with our kids, the timing was perfect. Well, Coach, appreciate you jumping on with this. And on that note, you've been a college head coach for nine years, and you were just mentioning it. You were just recently an offensive analyst at Oklahoma prior to taking the job at K-State. I'm just curious, what were some of the responsibilities you had as an analyst and, and just how different was that from your prior coaching experiences? Yeah, well, first of all, you you don't have to uh, worry about academics or compliance or recruiting, really. Uh, now, I love to recruit and I helped to recruit once the kids got on campus, especially with some uh, young men that we had relationships with, I had relationships with from from the previous school before Oklahoma. So but but it, reality minimized, and so it was, you know, ninety five percent football. Um, a, a role with Coach Venables, which included game situations and game, um, you know, situation mastery, game management, um, all the things that go into to that, as well as helping Jeff Levy and our offensive staff sitting in the quarterback room every day and and being a part of that. Um, with a, a role in part of the game planning and and just learning, um, and uh, and being a sponge. And I think if you're if you're not learning and you're not open to ideas, you're you're gonna grow stagnant. Uh, any profession. And so I felt, you know, for OU, I think maybe after 26 years of coaching, is spending those 20, you know, or 25 years of coaching, spending the next two years for me, it was. Um, man, I am going to be quiet. I'm going to listen and I'm just going to learn. And then when they ask, I'm going to be able to tr- try to help from my experiences and, and knowledge from some of the roles that I'd had previously. So hopefully it helped just a little bit. And it was, it was fun for me just to, to learn from BV, to learn from Jeff Levy. And I feel very, very fortunate uh, because in our profession, 
Um, those opportunities don't come along, guys, very much that where that you can take a little bit more of a back seat and and learn like an apprenticeship, if you will. And so for me, whether it was programmatically, if I ever get a chance to be a head coach again, um, recruiting, management, personnel, um, organization to specific football. And so for me, really that football part now that I'm here at K-State is really, um, I feel, um, has helped me grow, learn, and to see something at a high level on offense in the passing game, uh, really done at a really, really high level and efficient level, how to coach it, how to teach it, um, and how to repeat. And so you get um, a growth in the learning for like receivers and quarterbacks. And so for me, truly, truly beneficial that hopefully I can um, make us better. And it's really interesting stuff. And, and Coach, spring football right around the corner for you guys. I'm just curious, what are what are some of the top priorities you and the staff are hoping to accomplish on the offensive side of the football during the spring? Well, I think I think synergy on offense. I think knowing who we are. Things um, uh, there's a lot of that synergy uh, when you you look at the offensive staff, four guys coming back, but there's a guy in a new role and Connor Riley uh, being the chair at the end of the table, if you will. And um, me being the new guy coming in and learning what has made K-State so successful on offense and then saying, okay, now where do we go next? Um, is it uh, we got to reduce this and improve this? And and uh, what about the new players? I mean, we're losing some old linemen. We've got a brand new quarterback from a, a starting uh, perspective. Uh, DJ's coming back. Uh, there's some of the receivers coming back. The tight end room loses a really good player. Uh, but some guys coming back with experience. But what do we do best? And um, and what does number two do best? And then let's expand on that. But let's stay true to what's made K State great, uh, which is part of the reason that I wanted to come. So I, that's a balancing act, and so that's that's what's been fun. So I think those are the main focuses on spring ball, and then and then the you know you you got new personnel. So there's the obvious personnel. Um, evaluations and improvements that we have within the offense. Yeah, what what is you brought up Connor Riley? The what is the dynamic between you two as as far as it goes with a co offensive coordinator situation? Is it is it more like run game pass game, or how do you do you guys even know at this point exactly what that's that's going to look like? Oh, I think I think um, I don't think you so much have to draw a line in the sand um, here in February and say here's what it looks like. I think more than anything, it's allow it's it's Connor teaching me everything we've done, and then asking questions and me being able to uh, just help us grow and, and things that I've been accustomed to that we want to go to. So uh, I will say this for a guy that's a longtime O line guy, um, he has been a tight end coach before. I think he's got a tremendous grasp and perspective on the passing game, so much more than. Uh, quite a few online coaches and most coaches and and you know you can as as coaches you grow up in the world that sometimes either you played in or I've always coached in for instance a receiver coach sometimes that's his only world sometimes receiver coaches have a really good um, grasp on how the run game works and the protections fit Connor uh, there's the reason he was promoted uh, from from coach Kleiman is extremely smart very cerebral uh, but that doesn't make him boring and that doesn't make him stale because I know he can get after those old linemen and he does a great job with the run game. But I'm going to tell you, uh, he's got a really good feel for the passing game. But as most good coaches uh, do, I think he is right on track to what's best for K-State, what's best for Avery, what's best for the old line and how do we continue to do that in the running game? And then what's the best for our receivers and, and skill guys and um Man, it's fun. It's been fun working through everything, um, and and sitting in there together with him for um, man, a lot of hours all day, and and really probably more um, uh, football heavy, you know, and, and recruiting in there as well. But probably this will be the heaviest because of a new coordinator and a new quarterback coach in this offense than we'll be in the Februarys after, and and be able to focus on different things in the years to come. But, uh, man, it's been fun. I can remember back to, I, I think it was 2021 Big 12 Media Day that I was at when I asked Chris Kleiman, just kind of offhand question that you ask it, something like that. Like, who 
who do you have the best relationship with as far as coaches go in the country? I think I maybe even asked the country and not just the Big 12. And he said Matt Wells. So how, how far do you go back with, with Coach Kleiman and what's what's that relationship been like over the years? It's been really good. Um, it's uh, It started 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, when I looked into uh, potentially hiring him as a D coordinator when I was a uh, first-year head coach at, at Utah State. And, um, you know, after he decided to stay and, and knew the future for him was to be be a head coach and hopefully right there, which which actually happened a year later at uh, NDSU, just a friendship. And not more than a friendship, it, it grew to uh, a professional and a friendship and, and uh, just many phone calls and obviously um, Big 12 meetings together. Uh, but with entering the league at the same time, both of us in 2019 and um, maybe a week apart. I don't know exactly the days, but that December of 2018, but just, um, you know, going through COVID together and um, and being on all those Big 12 calls, but just, you know, programmatically um, and personally, just a lot of things that, that I just think the conversations over the years has allowed us to to grow and just I've I've got a, a really good friendship but a tremendous respect for him as a man as a leader and as a coach and man it's fun to see him on a daily basis um, lead this program and and there couldn't be a better leader for K State. Coach, I'm curious on that front because given the past relationship you had with Coach Kleiman and, and on the hiring process, I'm wondering if you could just share a few high level details of how that went down. Was this just something where Coach Kleiman called you? You accepted kind of on the spot via a phone call? Do you fly into Manhattan and want to want to talk and meet with the rest of the staff and do in person and maybe even meet with some of the players before you accept it? How did that all kind of shake out? Yeah, you know, busy time in December for, for uh, both of us. Um, so really nothing in person in December. But I think when you've had enough football conversations over the years, there's a certain um, starting point that may be different than in most conversations. Um, and so conversations with Connor Riley a lot during December, bowl prep for us, uh, us, Oklahoma, bowl prep at, at Kansas state. So a lot of busyness. And, uh, I, I know we played on the same night, you know, in December. And so those conversations, uh, certainly, um, you know, I remember having a FaceTime and, and a long conversation with Avery, uh, prior to, and, um, and so those, uh, certainly, um, occurred and then, you know, got a chance to come into Manhattan in, in early January. So, you know, those were um, conversations and I think as they went and then when both bowl games concluded, you know, at some point coach offered me the job and um, it was pretty quick, pretty quick. Yes. Uh, for the Wells family. Well, you, you mentioned coach, you FaceTime with Avery then before taking a job. I'm just curious, kind of what was the message or the tone of the conversation that you wanted to deliver in that? Did you guys get into schematics or just wanted to get to know each other all the above C both a and B I mean we we talked everything quarterback fundamentals guys that I'd coached in the past and um you know that was right in the heat of the playoffs so obviously Jordan came up um and just conversation there but getting to know each other um you know kind of starting that process and letting him ask questions and uh, getting to know who he is and his and his family's dad got on for for quite a while and it was just awesome it was easy um and so you know I didn't wasn't trying to sell him on anything I was just you know I think relationships uh can grow when they're built on trust and trust takes time and so that was obviously very very early stages of that and man he and I have spent a ton of time together um oh on the weekends in January and then through this whole month of February. And uh, the guy's a sponge. He's hungry. He's hungry to be not good, but great. And he's in this office right there on that couch um, a lot uh, on his own. Well, when you're out there uh, cheering on Avery Johnson this fall, everybody, and, and checking out Matt Wells and the Cats, make sure that you're in your home field apparel. Go to homefieldapparel.com. You can use Promo code 3 ball 23 to get 15% off your first order. They've got 40-plus K-State designs there. If you want, you can check out 100-plus other teams as well, but I'm telling you, the 40-plus K-State designs they have there are awesome. You see us wearing it frequently, so make sure you get to homefieldapparel.com. Again, promo code 3 ball 23 to get 15% off your first order. We, you bring up Jordan Love, and that was something I wanted to ask about because, I mean, we know you've hit the, the recruiting trail very hard here early on, and I'm, I'm sure that's got to help, right, to have that in, in your back pocket. Oh, by the way, I coached this guy who's now tearing it up in 
in the NFL. What, what kind of an impact does that make when you can point to an example like that of a guy that is having so much success right now at the next level? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things you recruit to. You recruit to the uh, the logo that you're at, the culture, the head coach, the system, um, and then recruits check out you. And so it, you're recruiting to yourself and your personality and how much you hit it off. And and then, you know, high-end level uh, recruits want to know your past and your success. And so that all plays a part. That's why it's important. Everything's important in recruiting. And um, your previous history, good or bad, will come up at some point um, with the recruiting you or it will be an opposing coach recruiting against you uh, that's bringing up, uh, you know, he doesn't have any experience with any high-level quarterbacks or what's their success been the last five years and the most recent. And uh, has he been at a at an offense and, and had a hand or helping or anything um, with passing success? That all is going to come up. Um, and so when it doesn't come up in a negative way, that means you've been fortunate to be a part of some really good offenses and, and players. And so that all matters. Your dad gum right. It matters. Yeah. I mean, because coaches are looking, especially when you're about to beat some schools on a kid, they're looking for negatives and, uh, and they're going to point it out. And I think sometimes that just shows recruits, you know, either their, um, you know, inadequacies or insecurities. And so you recruit from a, uh, a positive perspective and man it's I don't have to sell K-State you just present it I mean the the wins the bowl games uh, coach Kleiman's uh, success coach Kleiman's success with quarterbacks um, when you add that together from a head coach and a quarterback coach together uh, in this league that can be a uh, pretty powerful uh, tool to recruit with it's, it's crazy that I'm asking this question because it was not that long ago that you were a head coach, but since the time that you were and you were recruiting then to recruiting now, uh, how much has that, that landscape changed with the advent of, of NIL and the way that that's taken off and the, yeah. the portal and just everything that goes into it now? How different is it from, from the last time that you were doing that? Uh, 180. Not even, it, not even the same. It's not even, and it changed the three years I was at Texas Tech. It changed from 2019 to 2021. Um, with that portal opening right there and at the end of uh, my era or tenure, whatever, at, at, at Tech. And then over the last two years, significantly with with the open market and the, and the free transfer. So certainly that, coupled with NIL, um, is a whole different game. Coach, I wanted to ask you, uh, how much time did you take you, you took the job how much time have you spent watching film of the guys from last year you know all the guys not just Avery a quarterback right but the the overall offense the offensive line the returning receivers tight ends Garrett Oakley etc I'm just curious how much time you spent on that all day I mean that's all we do in here um I mean I know we recruit a little bit you know right now and, and we meet with the players when we can and we're watching early morning runs but uh the offensive stat I mean it's cut ups um, it's passed. We go back to 2022, go back to 2021, um, watching Oklahoma uh, from the last two years from all my cut ups and different concepts. And that's 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 all we're doing. And so inevitably, even when you're watching the concept of a route or a concept of run game concept, um, you're inevitably watching the players as well and and constantly asking who's that or, you know, you coming up with some some evaluations. But, you know, I also like to have a blank slate. And um, and give those guys, um, you know, an opportunity to to improve, and I think that's important as coaches. Um, but yeah, your your past matters. What you put on tape matters, and so I do get a chance to to watch those guys. Obviously, we've talked about Avery a couple different things. I, I do want to ask you. I mean, what what has stood out to you the most about him since getting to know him? Well, without coaching him on the field yet, and that's starting next Tuesday, I would just say the things that have stood out to me is uh, he's come really really competitive um in the early morning runs and and the competition in the weight room he's a he's a competitor um he competes against himself um he wants to be great um he needs hungry to learn so i think those are the things that i would just say he's a com- the competitiveness in him and the hunger to be great and how much he spends um watching film and learning and he's hungry to learn and and watch quarterbacks that um you know i think things that they can do or that he can see um, in them that can help improve him. Um, guys that 
that's what I would probably take away in the, these early days. And and the next day, there'll be another answer probably at the end of spring ball, just because I'll get to coach him on the on the grass. But highly competitive and uh, a birdie desire and a hunger to be great from a, a like a football IQ perspective. This may be another question that the answer could change by the end of spring ball, but and I'll leave it fairly open ended here. But when you envision what this offense is going to look like during the upcoming season, what what is ideal in your world? What do you want this this offense to look like? Well, first and foremost, establish the run, and you got to be able to run the football. I believe in the month of November to win in the league. League, um, and so you have to establish the run and establish the run. Now it's going to be able to open up your lanes either in the RPO game. Um, or in the play-action pass game. And so um, efficiency um, from our receivers in their route running, in the consistency, which will lead to hopefully a higher completion percentage in, in, in an accurate quarterback. So uh, just being efficient in the passing game when we do throw it. Um, and so, you know, I just think uh, as the offense evolves and, and there's so many new players that are going to be um, – taking taking roles and and when I say new I mean young players that had part-time roles now hopefully earning uh full-time roles uh so that'll be what's fun to see the progress throughout 15 practices and I don't mean to put you on the spot too much here but but you're going to I can tell right I'll go ahead know, yeah, that's that's kind of how it works I can handle it let's go like, right okay all right I just wanted a, a good Chris Kleiman story or something that we don't know about Chris Kleiman that would be Interesting, like Chris climbing the guy. Man, we hadn't even thrown a touchdown pass yet. I mean, come on, man. I don't know if I got enough built up to do this on a recorded. Um, you know, I, um, man, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I, I can tell you, there's nowhere in Iowa that I went, and I went to like five towns and maybe seven or eight schools in Iowa that doesn't that don't love him and know him. Um, or or his brother or his family, but I don't have any stories. I'm not going to say it right now. But let's talk again at the end of spring. How about that? Okay. Well, well, how, how about how about this, Coach? Because I was going to ask you that. I, I was going to ask you this in a, in a different way. So we've had over the last couple of years on the pod, we've had Adrian Martinez, Will Howard, we had Avery on last year as guests, and one of the things that they've told us each, each one of them has brought up on their own accord, is how unique and valuable it is to have a guy like Coach Kleiman, who's a defensive-minded coach, sit down with them, meet with them in the QB room each week, go through what he's saying an opposing defense tried to do. Just, I'm curious from your perspective, how valuable is it to have a head coach willing to do that and bring that perspective to the table? Uh, it's 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 huge. It can, it's a huge advantage for these quarterbacks at K-State. Maybe just why you've seen really good quarterback play. I mean, like, real talk. Uh, it's a that's a DB um, by experience, a DB coach by trade, all right, in a defensive mindset. And again, just like in recruiting, okay, he now has what the, you know street cred, right, with the players because I mean Easton Stick, Carson Wentz, Trey Lance, and then let's get to K State uh, with the successful K State quarterback starting with Skyler, um, all the way through you know, Will to. Uh, and I know I, I didn't say Adrian, but yeah, Adrian to Will to to now Avery. I mean, those guys get to sit down with him weekly. He explained this to me during recruiting when we were in the car one day uh, down in Texas or maybe we're in Oklahoma, but um, explained it to me how he does it. And I'm like, Coach, that's awesome. I mean, what valuable knowledge from an from a insightful guy from the other side of the ball to help feed into them and. And also create trust and, and create a, and a relationship with the head coach and a quarterback that I think it's very, very valuable. It's invaluable for those guys. And um, and again, maybe, not maybe, for sure part of the reason why you've seen very good quarterback plays, Chris Kleiman's um, a little bit of the secret sauce behind it. Love that. Love that. Look at that. Cole did a better job asking that question than I did. Nice job, Cole. Good job with that. Yeah, you're right, John. He did. <laughs> but I think coach coach we're going to be best friends if you take shots at john oh uh, yeah <laughs> hey matt we really appreciate you taking some time for us uh we're thrilled to have you here in, in in manhattan and best of luck getting everything going with spring ball man we can't wait to, to see you guys out there on the field thanks to be continued appreciate y'all having me on go cats